You know what this needs? <laughs> what does it need? Smoke. Yes. So a couple of weeks ago, you and Norm and I built this amazing robot by Michael Singh. Yeah, out of Singapore. Out of, um, called the codename Colossus. Yeah. And it took several hours to build. It's gorgeous. It's Arduino powered. It has these cool retro controls. Um, and it does a lot of things. Like it has these guns. It's you know, they rotate, and this one goes... It's functioning hexapod. And yeah. what's this one do? Oh yeah, it has these machine guns that rattle, and it walks. And it, it I mean, it walks really well, it's, but it lumbers it like boom, boom. And we loved it so much, we started thinking, right? Yeah. Well, as we were assembling it, it has these cool little, like, uh, kind of like exhaust on the back, uh -huh. and we noticed they're hollow, and we're like, oh. You know, it, this is so steampunk, and yeah. you know what this needs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, so. needs it needs to smoke. Yeah. And then we also <laughs> thought, wouldn't it be nice if it made a little more sound? Because it looks huge, but it doesn't, it's not making, it's, it's not- Atmospheric. Yeah, it, just a little bit of sound would sell the whole experience. Yeah. So uh, we put uh, our minds to the test. We said, well, you know what? We made a smoke before mm -hmm. in the ghost trap. Yeah, for, for those not familiar, uh, Jeremy and I teamed up and we did a working Ghostbusters ghost trap. So one of the dream uh, things I was like, it has to smoke, it has to smoke. Yep. And so uh, we, I put together a little uh, uh, smoking unit that's using e-cigarettes. So we're gonna repurpose that uh, to go on this. And it's kind of like, uh, this is easy enough that you could repurpose this to do like any kind of proper cosplay thing. And we're going to be using a controller, but you could literally wire this up to a battery with an on-off switch. You're good to go. So all it takes is power and some kind of switch. We're going to control it using a pin on the Arduino that's in here. Yeah. Just like we did with the Ghost Trap. Yep. And we're going to give the, all the parts for people so they can uh, add smoke to their own projects if mm -hmm. they want to. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, just real briefly, the sound was a simple solution. I just grabbed our favorite soundboard from Adafruit. This is one of these things that requires no microcontroller. I love that one. No yeah. logic. All you do is you short pins and you get sound from the thing and it looks like a USB drive. So I connected this to my computer, I dragged over some battle sounds, yeah. and then I shorted permanently pin one and I named the files such that it just loops forever. That's so super easy. And then I found this speaker on Amazon with this is my favorite thing. Mini jack on it, plug them together, and then, uh, well, <laughs> it won't work until we put sound, uh, deliver power to this unit, but that's it. It's like self, it's self running. That's so easy. No, even, you don't even have to wire it then. Exactly. So we just put five volts to the soundboard and we'll start to hear battle sounds. So okay. We'll do that um, once we get inside. Yeah. Uh, besides that, uh, the designer, Michael Singh, already released the source code. So I right. downloaded that and I inserted some code for, to control the smoke because you don't want the smoke to run constantly. No, you'll overheat the e-cigarettes, that'd be bad. So yeah. I have it running whenever you walk, and it will, perfect. it will run for five seconds and then shut down for five seconds that until sounds, you walk again. That sounds perfect. All right, yeah. so where, where, how should we get started here? So what, let's, well, maybe we should just uh, talk about the parts for the smoke pump. Uh, when I was researching it for the ghost trap, uh, typically the setup was you had a, a pump uh, and an air pump, and typically it was just uh, an outlet that was blowing basically, mm -hmm. right? So then you get one of the, the beefy e-cigarettes that uh, you have to press a button to heat up and to use, okay? So when you vape, you push the button, it heats it up, you inhale and you know, whatever. So um, that required a little bit of tr uh, delicate wiring and soldering that you had to do directly on the e-cigarette. Okay. And then basically what you're doing is you're, you're kind of blowing through the e-cigarette backwards to make it smoke. Um, so I was trying to simplify things a little bit and I didn't want to have to uh, deal with soldering to the e-cigarette right. and also refilling them can be a little tricky because they're, they're, they're soldered and everything. So what I did is I looked around and I found this pump which has an inlet and an outlet. Is that like a water pump? Yeah, it's <laughs> typically if you go on eBay, it's a breast pump. Because huh. I guess they're used for breast pumps a lot. Yeah. Uh, so it has an inlet and an outlet so you can truly suck on the cigarette. And then I just got these simple uh, pressure activated ones, which are the ones that typically look like a cigarette. And I spent a little extra money and I did get the ones that had the removable refillable cartridge. Oh, so that's super easy. Yeah, so what you can do is you can leave the e-cigarette mounted in whatever you're in and then just pull this off to refill it. And what do you fill it with? Um, 
I'm using vegetable glycerin, so uh, very friendly. It can be in food. It's really cheap, and it gives you the best, densest smoke. And, totally and then there's no like, there's no strawberry smell or right. nicotine or anything like that. Cool. And it's far cheaper than vape fluid. All right. Yeah. Let's get to work. Cool. All right. So here's here's what I did. So we took off one of the smokestacks, right. and it screws on from the inside. So I made a little inside plate. Oh, you, you modeled that? Yeah. Okay. So I measured uh, the, the diameter of this and then I just, I, I modeled in a curve to match that. Nice. So this is the back plate and screws will go through that into the, uh, the muffler, right? Why does that have to be flush? Uh, it just makes it fit nicer, okay. that's all. And then I, I made this, which will glue on this because I wasn't exactly sure where it needed to be on it, hmm. but this is gonna glue on that, right? And then this will hold our smoke pump oh, wow. and our cigarettes. So that's just gonna <laughs> that's just gonna mount on the interior wall, that's basically awesome. right behind this. That's genius, right? So then the hoses will have one Y uh -huh. connector that comes from the e-cigarettes into the pump, yeah. and then uh, another Y that wow. will come out to the two smoke sacks. Nice. The first thing that I needed to find was a pin on the Arduino that was available. The designer of this board actually used almost all the pins because there's so many moving parts and LEDs and so many things. Uh, in this case, I found one. It, was, it happened to be pin 13. Uh, but the point is, if you want to add smoke to any kind of model, you have to find an available pin that will trigger the transistor that will eventually allow this power to pass through to the smoke motors. Uh, so you need to find this available uh, digital pin on the Arduino, uh, power, and a ground terminal. Uh, five volts for the power. We're doing a test fit of the smokestack. I have the hose attached, but the uh, due to adding the hose, we need to make the hole a little bit bigger. Here we're using a step bit, which are really good for using in thin plastics and metals that it won't grab or crack anything. So if you enlarge the hole, allow the whole smokestack and the hose to fit in properly. In the case of this model, it was pretty awesome because these exhaust things actually they were hollow. Yeah. They were ready for smoke already. Yeah. This was clearly a part of the original design. I think so. Soldering up the uh, motor to the power is, is just a matter of running power from either ground or power through the motor and then through the transistor as well. Uh, the transistor basically acts as a switch. So we'll, here we're going to solder up the motor uh, to the power and then we're going to run power straight into the transistor um, and then the transistor will trigger the, the motor a little bit later on. So obviously when you get everything hooked up as you think they should be, it's best to test. So uh, plug in the motor, uh, make sure that's getting power, get your transistor plugged into the Arduino board, and then uh, send that pin high to the transistor. And with any luck, you should turn on that motor. Um, in our case, it took a little bit of troubleshooting because until I found that correct pin, there was some overlap between other signals. So the motor was turning on and off all by itself. But if you get that motor turning on, you know that it will emit smoke once it's hooked up to the smoke machine. So for those of you put installing a smoke uh, system on your own device, uh, if you don't want to use the Arduino, if you don't have experience programming, you can simply add an on-off switch uh, on one of the leads of the motor and then trigger uh, the smoke by just turning the motor on and off. And that will work just fine. You don't want to run it too long and overheat the e-cigarettes, but we usually go like maybe like five second bursts, which put out a nice amount of smoke. And then a nice little pause of like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. just let it cool down a little bit. All right, let's watch these lights, see if it flashes. There's some flashing, right? Mm -hmm. A flashing Arduino code is, is, should be straightforward. In this case, with these cool red fun Duino boards, I found that they only would flash after a reboot. So you had to unplug them, plug them in, and flash quickly. Interesting. Which, which is unlike regular Arduino boards, which have the ability to reset on their own. Uh, so that, that took a... <laughs> that took 10 minutes to figure it out. But, you know, once we got past that, no big deal. And you were just modifying uh, the code, uh, the existing code, correct? The, the This project was open sourced, and so I was able just to go in and wherever it started to walk, mm -hmm. I was able to send the smoke signal. Great. And then whenever it stopped walking, obviously, it would stop the smoke. Um, but that was very, very straightforward. It's just a matter of setting that pin high. Um, any Arduino programmer should be able to figure that out pretty simply. I designed a custom 3D printed motor mount uh, to hold the motor and the e-cigarettes. So here I'm just uh, 
putting it onto the motor and I'm using a rubber pad to hold it still because with that pump you get a lot of vibration so you want to you want to have it securely mounted and uh, just uses a screw that clamps it shut and then there's clips on either side uh, to install the e-cigarettes. If people want to use the same motor how did you find that tubing to go along with it? Uh, the tubing, I got uh, all the accessories from McMaster Car, but you could probably find this stuff on Amazon or even like an aquarium store. So the little T-junctions and the connectors and, and you can probably find them elsewhere. Oh, you use the T-junction in order mm -hmm. to get smoke out of both of these Yeah, exhausts. so uh, on my normal setup for this, I just use one T-junction that goes from, that joins the two cigarettes together. So it's uh, one, uh, two inputs and one output. But in this case, we've added a T-junction to the output as well so that we can go to both of the smokestacks. Very cool. And did you happen, to, was it totally coincidental that this tubing matched this model? Yes. Uh, I just happened to have the right tubing that happened to fit on those smokestacks. It just needed a little bit of a uh, uh, little slit at the end and slid right on. Love it. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a super flexible uh, silicon tubing that is a lot softer than the other stuff. And uh, it is actually what's going on to the e-cigarettes. And it's flexible enough that it will accept uh, a variety of diameters. So I'm trimming it uh, to leave just enough room to put the other tubing in. And it's just a friction fit. Um, if you find that you, your tubing isn't matching up well, uh, what you can do is use a little contact cement to glue the um, two together. Uh, another option is that, that I've successfully done before is some heat shrink. So, uh, you know, uh, put some heat shrink that is close to the size of the e-cigarette on the end. You put the uh, tubing in the other end, heat shrink it, and that might seal it up good enough. Once again, you can add a little contact cement if you need to. And we're adding another T-junction between the uh, e-cigs. And what about connecting the clear tube to the to the connector tube? Uh, once again, just uh, uh, we're, it's all with the little um, uh, junctions, the T junctions. So they have a little barb on the end, uh, Got and it. so uh, one of each end goes to the e-cigarettes, and then the third goes to the pump. Oh, but like here, you're connecting the actual uh, the two tubes together. So they just have diameters that that ma that mate. Yes. Uh, so I matched up the super flexible, the black tubing with uh, the outer diameter of the other one, so they friction fit really well, Perfect. and I don't even need glue. But if you can't match it up exactly, once again, use the contact cement. Now we're uh, snapping the e-cigarettes into the holder on the motor mount, and that will hold those in place and make them easy, easily accessible to uh, refill the tanks when needed. That's a super smart uh, 3D print you made. Yeah. And we now uh, we're hooking up the uh, the outlet from the pump uh, or the inlet to the pump. So it, the inlet uh, to the pump is now connected to the e-cigarette, so it will suck on the e-cigarettes. Do you have to be aware of where the of open air for the e-cigarettes in order to intake? Technically, yes, but unless you had it packed in like something really tight, it it shouldn't. You can put them in like just about anywhere. Cool. Because the inlets are pretty small. The sound effects board could not be simpler, and I love it. It is our favorite board from. Adafruit, which is a, a board that you connect to the computer and it shows up as a USB drive. You drag your sound files over, either Augorbis or WAV files, and then all you have to do is connect pins on the board itself to ground, which is also on the board. And in my case, I just bridged them. So I just connected them permanently and I um, named the file as the file name that you need to name it in order to make it loop forever. So I uh, dragged on some machine sounds that Sean found mm -hmm. and some sounds of war and... Um, it runs in perpetuity. I really like that board because if you want, you can run it independently from an Arduino or any controller. Uh, so it can be a standalone sound effects board, which is great. Exactly, yeah. And it doesn't take up any processing time. Uh, super easy to run. And as far as the speaker goes, it's, um, gosh, $17 on Amazon. That was a great, that's great because it just plugged right into the headphone jack. Exactly, yeah. There's, there's no Bluetooth, nothing like that. It just plugs right into the little headphone jack. You do have to power it on. It does have to be, it does have its own battery, so mm -hmm. you have to keep it charged. Right. But um, it's, it sounds great, and it's uh, all self-contained.
All right, so now we're uh, doing the final hookup for the outlet of the pump that's going to the smokestacks. So uh, when you hook up this pump, you just wanna make sure that you do it correctly. I think that even if you wired it uh, backwards, like if you reverse the polarity on the power, uh, I think the way this pump is designed, it would still actually work the way it was, but you need to make sure that you have the inlet and the outlet uh, hooked up correctly. So you can do that simply by just placing your finger over them and, and feeling what one is sucking and which one's blowing, easy enough. Enough. Uh, and we're once again using a Y connector on the outlet of this so that we can go to each of the smoke pumps. And you can, uh, in, in cases such as the Ghostbusters Ghost Trap, when we did that, uh, we actually I designed a, th a 3D printed rail that was inside the lip of the top that had a bunch of outlets on it. So we only needed one connector for that. And then the 3D printed part took care of the rest. Should we power up? Yeah, I think we're good. Let's Go for see. it. First All thing right. we should get is some sound. All right. Battle sounds. All right. That's pretty great, actually. Yeah. I thought it'd be a little muffled, but it's perfect. No, it's it's good. All right. All right. So here's here's the moment of truth. Okay. We're gonna walk forward, see if we get some smoke out. Okay. All right. Yeah! <laughs> That's awesome! Oh my god! That looks perfect. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Look at that, oh my God, it's so cool. And then it stops when you stop. Yep. And then um, if you keep walking, there'll be a five second pause between smoke bursts. <laughs> it's like the engine's I cool for a moment. It. it takes us to a whole nother level. And then, so how long would this smoke last that's in there? Quite a long time. I ran the ghost trap at a convention all day long without refilling it once. Really? Yeah. And if that's using the same amount as we use here? Yeah. Same kind of power? Yeah. That's really epic. My gosh, I mean, can they see this? It's just so cool. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, oh man. Yeah, this, this is actually not a hard project to do. We just ran into some wiring pin programming issue yep. stuff. But as far as uh, wiring up the pump mm -hmm. and the e-cigarettes, and that's why I kind of went with this, it, it kind of simplified things a little bit. So I'll turn off that. So uh, by just using the pressure activated cigarettes, it, it worked a little better. What I would recommend is do not get the cheapy, like uh, corner store e-cigarettes oh. for a few reasons. I didn't know there were different kinds. Okay. Yeah, uh, they're not gonna give you quite as good smoke, most likely, um, mm -hmm. because of the atomizer in it. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other problem you run into is that they, you can't refill the cartridge easily. No. Like you can kind of pry them apart and yeah. then there's like cotton batting in there and you can soak it down, but you gotta, you gotta get rid of all the nicotine or whatever, the, you know, the flavored uh, yeah. vapor, whatever. So it's better to spend a little bit extra money and get the ones with the refillable cartridges. Are the ones that you picked a little more expensive? Is that? They are. Okay. The, the ones that I use were uh, Joytech mm -hmm. E-Roll cigarettes. Um, and they had the, uh, they have a little charging unit that comes with it, which is cool. And they have the refillable cartridge. So it's, it's worth spending a little extra money to get the pressure activated ones that have the cartridge. So, Great. Yeah. But other than that, as far as it's up easy to, hookup. To, hooking it to an Arduino is just a matter of running it through that transistor. Mm -hmm. um, you get the, the signal wire coming out of your Arduino and you set that pin high when you want to open the floodgates. You send your voltage or your ground through the transistor to the motor, right. and that way you can't run the, the motor off with the pin from the Arduino, that's the only, that's the only trick, right? Okay. Um, besides that, um, good to go. I forgot to set, that pin, to set that pin to output, so set your pins to output, people. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we'd love to see what you guys do with this and what you make smoke and what you make go. Uh, just need some tubing, a pump, and uh, some e-cigarettes. Yep, can I see it again? Oh, yes. Dun, dun, dun. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Look at that. Boom. Well done. Awesome. Norm better appreciate this. 